now it's your turn, including the guys lassù, se, se qualcuno vuole fare un intervento. If anybody wants to ask a question from up there as well, I don't know how we're going to get the microphone to you, but still. La vostra ultima occasione, siete Your last chance, you're so silent. Come up here. Su. Non posso credere che tutto quello che è stato detto fino ad ora vi abbia lasciato. I can't believe that you don't have any reaction to everything that we've heard so far. Of course, you can speak Italian. <laughs> well, good morning, everyone. I'm an economic journalist from the province of Cuneo. My name is Alessandro Zerniotti. Well, first of all, congratulations for uh, the meeting of today. Now, my, I hope my comment can be a sort of a bridge between the first and the second part. I would like also to uh, give some... Uh, Food for thought for the following speakers as well, even though now it's a question for you. Now, in economic and social terms, I've dealt with the Renaissance uh, even during my studies. Now, the Renaissance developed because uh, a link was created between the artistic and intellectual elites and the so-called middle class, uh, the me merchants uh, um, of the time. Now, unfortunately, this link in uh, modern cultures has completely disappeared. Social innovation cannot move away from uh, the recreation, uh, the regeneration of the middle class, of the idea of a middle class. Now, this is a topic and it is an idea in addition to what uh, the second uh, speaker already said. And by the way, congratulations when you talked about uh, the uh, divide between a small rich class and a wide uh, poorer population. I fully agree with that. Now, what I was saying is that if we talk about social innovation without uh, thinking about the rebirth of a middle class, we will uh, continue having a defensive approach. And we are seeing it. Even the forms of community capitalism, solidarity, spontaneous uh, uh, contribution are not stopping and not preventing the decline. We're in Turin. In Turin, we have a paradox. We have very innovative startups. And at the same time, poverty is spreading. So the problem is that we are here without the public sector, the main partner, fiscal and tax policies, public policies are still defensive. They have, you know, they continue imposing taxes on families and companies which become higher and higher. On the other hand, public services are thinner and thinner and more and more difficult to access because they uh, require higher and higher taxes. Now, I don't think that we can talk about social innovation without uh, regenerating a middle class. Otherwise, even the community and the association-based uh, approaches will still have a defensive approach. And uh, I think that statistical data will uh, continue to clash against uh, social innovation. Thank you very much. Thank you. We are bit late, so we'll stop here with this one question, and I'll give the floor to our speakers. You first. Uh, it's quite simple for me. You're totally right. Um, uh, democracy and the middle class have a perfect correlation. As you, grow a as you grow a middle class, you grow democracy. As you diminish it, you kill it. Now, the philosophical question that we've got on our hands is will a network society give us democracy in the way we had it? Was the idea of the middle class an industrial age product? And I think we may be there. We may be in a world where actually the notion of the middle, per se, is not going to be. If you remember the graph I showed you, in that, where's the middle? There's the high and the long. And at that future, that may be a product of the technology environments we're in. And at that moment, what you have to talk about is the viscosity of capital. How quickly does it move? The viscosity of wealth. Is it moving quickly through the system? And I think at that moment, you have to, type, type, you have to talk about a new typology of state. The insuring state becomes a key component of that viscous, viscous new model. 
So I think, I, I just don't know. Here's, a, here's what I was, the kind of network captures, the platform owners, the network people, and the people outside the networks. Maybe is a better classification of our future society. Those that own the platforms, that is where wealth and power will be concentrated. Those that create the networks, and those that are outside. So I'm not sure, you're right about the intent, I'm just not sure the notion of the middle will exist. And I think we're gonna to have to build whole new terms and addresses to deal with actually the viscosity and equality of, uh, of democracy in a new way. I would just say that what you uh, might want to think about is how are you going to create the place for these kinds of discussions? You don't want these discussions just to reside in academia. You want them rooted in community. So creating these kind of places that engages multiple stakeholders to have the kind of discussions and base them in values of what is important to the Italian people is critical. And so that's what I would uh, recommend. Un grande applauso ai nostri... A big round of applause to all our speakers. Thank you very much. Now I give the microphone to Leonardo. Thank you very much.